Please be seated. Welcome. Welcome to Olin Business School's undergraduate graduation recognition ceremony. My name is Mark Taylor, and it's my great privilege and honor to be the Dean of the John M. Olin School of Business. It's also my honor to be with you on this important occasion. I want to welcome everyone who's with us this morning, as well as those of you who are joining us by live stream for WashU Olin's ceremony, a compliment to WashU's university-wide commencement. Today, we'll take time to recognize individuals among our undergraduates for their impressive accomplishments while we're in the company of family and friends. Indeed, right now, I'd like us to take a moment to recognize those family members and friends among us. And I would like to ask our, our graduands to please stand and give them a round of applause for their support and guidance that, they've brought, that has brought you to this moment. Now for the task at hand. We are gathered here today to recognize the BSBA class of 2019 as you transition from the life of a Wash U student to that of a working professional and Olin Business School alum. Your presence here today is a testament to your four years of hard work in the classroom, in the library, inside the atrium, or anywhere else you've gathered to finish homework, complete a project, or plan an event. You've earned high praise and congratulations because you've completed a rigorous and challenging curriculum of business school education, one that has placed you among the most qualified and prepared students to emerge from this university this year. And I can say that with confidence because I know what has gone into creating the experience that brought you here today. I know what's happened behind the scenes. I know about the quality of the faculty members who've been at your disposal, the career planning and student services deployed on your behalf, and the army of alumni who shared insights with you on campus. At Wash U Olin, we've challenged you to be evidence-based business professionals, prepared with the skills to create and apply a data-driven framework to the decisions you make. At the same time, we've encouraged you to make those decisions in the context of your personal values and the values of the organizations and communities to which you belong and which you represent. The world is crying out for professionals with these skills, the skills to make evidence-based, principled decisions that can change the world for good. These are the skills of leaders who are prepared to confront challenge and create change. These skills are now a part of your core, instilled through your own hard work and the experiences you've had here. Many of you have rubbed shoulders with business leaders from our community working on experiential projects to help solve real-world business problems. And why is that important? Because these experiences illustrate the intricate way our decisions affect different parts of a business. They exercise muscles focused on innovation and entrepreneurship. They boost our confidence in our classroom skills and they expose us to professionals who one day may be looking for someone just like you to fill a job, solve a problem, or advance their company. As you, some of you may have gathered uh, and may have heard, I'm not originally from the United States. Uh, it's true. Uh, but my career has carried me abroad so many times um, that I have changed where I think of as my home. My home is now the United States, my home is St. Louis, my home is Wash U Olin. Economic barriers continue to fall. Technology shrinks the global business world further and further. Even the smallest of companies now relies on a global supply chain to survive and thrive. You leave Wash U with the cultural competency to understand how different governments and different cultures view business. You've, gave, you've gained a level of global mobility, the comfort to confront new situations, new cultures. This is why we place such an emphasis on a global education at Olin, and why I'm happy to say 
that at least six out of 10 of you have traveled internationally during your four years as a Wash U Olin student. You came to the business school with raw talent, with ambition, with fortitude. And your mere presence here today is proof enough of that. At Wash U Olin, you built on those raw materials with a data-driven, values-based approach to making business decisions. You applied your classroom skills to real-world problems and learned to think creatively, innovatively, and, dare I say it, out of the box. You've become familiar with, with and deepened your understanding about the global reach of business. This is why I can stand before you and say with confidence that you're among the most well-prepared business students in the world today. You emerge from Wash U Olin well equipped to face the challenges and seize the opportunities that await you. You've sharpened your professional skills, acquired new business tools, and broadened your approach to leadership and problem solving. And I know in my core that good things await you. But before we move ahead with the ceremony, I want to remind you that while you're going away, you're not going far. Olin's faculty, staff, and students have stood with you, and you with them, throughout your studies and throughout your experiences on campus and off. With your graduation today, you expand your global network to include nearly 30,000 Olin alumni around the world. You'll further gain a connection to the broader Washington University alumni network and retain your connection to our renowned faculty, many of whom are here today. In fact, I would like to take a moment to recognize the faculty who've joined us this morning. Faculty member, members, please stand and remain standing as I call your name. Please hold your applause until all the faculty have been introduced. Jan Kai, Judith Gebhardt, Todd Gormley, Mahendra Gupta, Carol Yonahek, Ivan Lapuka, Michael McLaughlin, Bernardo Silvera, Eli Sneer, Mark Sosek. I would also like to introduce special guests of our keynote speaker, Atima Louis, who's uh, joining us on stage today. We'll met her at Oliver Diallo, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and Mrs. Clara McLeod, Earth and Planetary Sciences Librarian, Olin Library. <laughs> Representing our undergraduate staff on stage today are Yoon Groves, Director of Academic and Student Affairs, Paige LaRose, Associate Dean and Director of Undergraduate and Graduate Programs, Steve Malta, Senior Associate Dean of Undergraduate and Graduate Programs, and Jennifer Witten, Associate Dean and Director of the Western Career Center. In addition to the staff members you see on stage, many more are here today helping, helping to make this a special day. And from the day you arrived as a first year student until today and beyond, Olin staff members work tirelessly to help you, to guide you, and to provide individual care and attention. And can I ask all Olin staff members in attendance today to please stand and be recognized. It is now my very great privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Atima Louis who not so many years ago was sitting in the very same position that you're in today, awaiting the chance to walk across the graduation stage. Atima is the founder and the CEO of fashion and beauty tech startup Nudest, where she licenses skin tone matching artificial intelligence technology to help fashion uh, beauty brands produce and sell products for people of all skin tones. While a second year BSBA student at Olin, Atima opened and ran a full-service hair, nail, and tanning salon targeting multicultural customers, while, just in, her, in the rest of her time, triple majoring in international business, marketing, and Spanish. Please join me in welcoming Atima Louis to the lectern.
Graduates, you made it. The day is finally here. Parents, they're finally graduating. And I want to start by saying that it is truly my honor and a pleasure to be here today because I have the wonderful job of welcoming you to the ranks of Olin alumni. And let me tell you, it is great to be an Olin alum. We're a pretty freaking talented and ambitious group of people. We make a difference in our communities and in our organizations. The business acumen and hard skills that we learned in the classroom at Olin equip us to be the leaders in any career of our choice. The grit we all share, which got us to Wash U in the first place, and then carries us across the finish line to graduation day, has trained us to take on any challenge that we choose, regardless of the unforeseen obstacles. But none of this is news to anyone in the room today. Your parents certainly know how special you are. Your professors have borne witness to what you're capable of. And no matter if you got a 4.0 or you're graduating just by the skin of your teeth, the fact that you've achieved this, you're getting your Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration from Olin Business School, is an incredible testament to what you can do the incredible support system that surrounds you and what you will achieve in the future. So really you don't need me to tell you how great you are, that you have what it takes to achieve your dreams and that you are destined for success. It's already inside of you. You already have what it takes to lead productive and happy lives of abundance. But you know, they do say that your generation is the most anxious that America has ever seen, that in an Instagram-dominated world where we have these misleading narratives about what success and happiness looks like, that we can often compare ourselves to impossible standards that might make us feel inadequate. They say that the pressure to be successful and a millionaire by 30 is sometimes unbearable and that the super connected, always on lifestyle that has been afforded to you by rapid advances in technologies. Yes, I'm talking about that cell phone that you're texting with under your graduation robes. <laughs> that that can leave you exhausted and maybe even afraid sometimes to give yourselves permission to rest. Now, if you can't relate to any of this, then cool, you're probably a mindfulness guru and the Oprah of your generation, and I'd like to meet you after this so you can teach me a thing or two. But if you find yourself sometimes feeling overwhelmed by that pressure to be successful or questioning your abilities, or maybe afraid of some of that uncertainty about what to expect after graduation day, let me tell you, as one anxious person to another, that you are already successful. You have, yes. <laughs> you certainly deserve applause. You have what it takes, and you will continue on this trajectory of success. I'm gonna say it again, that you will continue on this trajectory of success. So perhaps right now you're thinking, yeah, right, Atima. There's no way for you to predict the future, and there's no way for you to get it right about every single one of us. Oh, but I can. Not only do I fancy myself a bit of a witch in possession of what the internet likes to call black girl magic, but I also have been on a journey since my Olin BSBA graduation in 2012, unlearning everything that I thought I knew about what a successful graduate of this institution must be. When I was in your shoes seven years ago, I thought success meant that after achieving this milestone, I had to look a certain way, make a certain amount of money, work at a certain type of company, and most importantly, make all of my peers jealous in the process. You see, for me, success was a zero-sum game of competition and rigidity. There was only so much success to go around, and in order to grab it, I needed to mold myself into the image of what I thought powerful people are like, no matter how uncomfortable or inauthentic it made me feel. 
you know, today's equivalent to trying super hard to have 100,000 social media followers and thousands of likes on each post. You know, what other th others thought of me, that was paramount. My feelings, unimportant. Anxiety, that was a weakness that would hold me back. I was comfortable with the pain of constantly ranking myself against others and their markers of success. There were winners and losers. And I needed to be a winner. I needed to focus on making as much money as possible because after graduation, my salary would be the new GPA, right? The higher, the better. And most crucially, it would be an accurate measure of my worth. Well, I've come here from the great beyond where Olin alumni reside, a realm that you will be entering shortly to tell you that all of that is bullpucky. <laughs> and now Dean Malter is never gonna let me talk to another Wash U audience again. But while I still have the microphone, I wanna tell you that the most successful version of you is the real you, seriously. The you with all your quirks and imperfections, the you that builds a life defining success by your own standards and not the standards of your peers, of your professors, of what you see on Instagram, and dare I say it, not even the standards of your parents. The most successful version of you is the you that experiences fear and anxiety yet bravely keeps moving forward towards your goals anyway. A lot like what the past four years, maybe five years, six years, however many years it's taken you to arrive to graduation day, it honestly doesn't matter. The length of time doesn't matter. Future employers don't care. What matters is the perseverance that you've demonstrated what I know is inside you along this journey towards graduation. That's what's important. You've established yourself as a brave, lifelong learner, ready to traverse those ebbs and flows that make up any worthwhile pursuit, whatever you choose. And let me tell you another secret about why I know you're going to be successful. It turns out that in our capitalist society, absolutely everything is a business, everything. So what you've learned in the Olin classroom applies to leadership roles at all levels of all industries. Do you want to be a startup founder? Great, <laughs> Olin graduates have done that. Do you want to be a food writer for the New York Times? Great, Olin graduates have done that. Do you want to be a medical researcher? I also know Olin graduates who have done that. So yes, I can stand in front of you today and say in full confidence that you are and will continue to be successful. You are prepared and you have what it takes to go and get what you want on your terms. Not sure what that is, not sure what you want yet, that's even better, because when I was in your shoes, I thought that I had to have a plan for absolutely everything. I'm talking a five-year plan, 10-year plan, 15-year plan for my career, my personal life, perfectly mapped out with notes in the margins for what to do in case of contingencies. If not married by age 25, move to big city, hire one of these three pre-approved matchmaking services, I'm serious. I had my full retirement plan down to the net present value of my pension. But you know what the problem is with hyper planning? It leaves absolutely no room for flexibility for the unexpected. No room for the joys of serendipity. Seven years ago, I was supposed to be working at Google, then go get my MBA, then go back to Google, and any deviation from that plan would be deemed a failure. Game over. Well, guess what? I didn't go to Google after graduation. I've never been that product marketing manager that I thought I would be at Google. I also have missed that married by age 25 goal. You know, you win some, you lose some. Instead, 
I live in New York. I turned down an offer to work at Apple and I started an artificial intelligence company that focuses on technologies in which I have absolutely no expertise whatsoever. I don't even know what the next six months of my startup will look like, let alone the next 10 years. But what I can say for sure is that I'm happy that I learn something new every day, that working with my brother as my CTO and my mother as my executive assistant, both of whom are in the audience today, is a daily joy. <laughs> It's a daily joy that I never would have experienced if I had taken that job that I had planned in my five, 10 year plan. I know that today my team and I persevere through unexpected and daily challenges not unlike getting an Olin BSBA degree. And we achieve goals and milestones we never even knew that we wanted or that existed when we first started on this journey of building a startup. This journey is not at all what I planned. It's fraught with disappointments, but also lined with sweet achievements. And I am successful. And it has taken me seven years since my graduation from Olin to fully recognize and fully feel that success on my own terms. And I absolutely forbid each and every one of you from taking that long to feel successful. So, before we close out, I want everyone to close their eyes, slowly take a deep breath in, and as you let it out, notice in your mind's eye all the ways that you are successful on your own terms. Notice how you've been a supportive classmate, how you've contributed to student organizations, how you passed those difficult midterms, how you thrived living away from home, how you've picked yourself up when you were feeling low, how you've gotten yourself to graduation day. Graduates, congratulations on your success, relish in it, and trust that more success is coming your way. Thank you. Thank you for those wonderful words, Atima. And in fact, I'd like to present you with a gift of our appreciation today. It reads, <clears throat> Dean's Honor, presented to Atima Louis with sincere appreciation of your keynote address at the Olin Undergraduate Graduate Recognition Ceremony, May 17th, 2019. The Olin class of 2019 student speaker is Matthew Savage. <laughs> Matt is an economics and strategy and finance double major and is originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. In his four years at Olin, he's grown immensely and has made lifelong friends. After graduation, Matt will be working in Chicago at Bain and Company as an associate consultant. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew Savage. Well, first off, uh, thank you very much, Dean Taylor, for the introduction. Before beginning my remarks, I'd like to start by wishing the Dean a very happy birthday. So, happy birthday, Dean Taylor. <laughs> Students, faculty, friends, and family, it is an honor to stand here before you as the class speaker for the Olin class of 2019. 
Little do you know that you've selected a commencement speaker who not only failed an intro class, but was rejected from countless student groups and even considered transferring at one point. Quite the turnaround, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Maybe you were unaware of that when you selected me, but thank you for not letting these define who I am. I'm very excited to share my story with you today. $200,000 in an offshore bank account and some Photoshop track photos later, I was finally admitted into my dream school. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, wrong school. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> Upon all of our honest admission to Wash U, we each had something in store for our different but intertwined identities. Matt the student hoped he'd find academic success here. Matt the young professional would learn what that even means and Matt the friend would find a close-knit community of people to share the impending four years with. Quickly, however, each of these identities would begin to disintegrate. It began with Matt the business professional who, after rushing a business fraternity, was cut before the final round. Ouch. Come spring, Matt the social and fun-loving guy was put to the test in fraternity rush. Evidently, I was not that social or fun-loving since I did not get a bid from any fraternities. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Fear not, however, Matt the student still stood strong. So as I had done before, I ignored these rejections and pivoted towards the last identity of mine that had some residual value. Matt the student, meet the QBA 120 final. When I received my exam, I completely blanked, and I mean blanked. My brain was emptier than all of my Calc 2 lectures. <laughs> the final dropped my grade to a D plus, meaning I had failed the course, ouch. Left without any identities to pivot towards, I was defeated. My mind was worrying, extrapolating these failures to the nth degree. If I couldn't get into a business fraternity, would I ever get a job? If I couldn't get into a social fraternity, would I ever make friends? Would I be haunted by my failure in QBA? And the answer was no, no, and definitely no. Surely, failure is hard. Failure does not feel good, but failure is not permanent. How many of you actively think about all the colleges that you got rejected from? Probably not many of you because, hot take, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that being said, it's important to have safe spaces to fail. The first time you shaved, you probably didn't have a big interview in the morning, so who cares if you cut yourself a little bit? Olin similarly provided a safe space to fail, but on a bigger stage. If you failed a test or slept through your Thursday morning class after a night at T's, chances are that your life was pretty undisturbed. However, Olin can only prepare us for so much. As we move into this next stage of our lives, we will most certainly continue to fail and fail often. Maybe you'll get rejected from graduate school. Maybe you won't get that promotion. Maybe you won't have the weekly FaceTimes with friends that you've been promising. But that doesn't mean that you're a failure as a student, as an employee, or as a friend. We will never be defined by our GPA, job titles, singular events, and momentary failures. The most important thing is to not run away from these failures or turn a blind eye to all our identities that are under duress. I certainly fell into that trap and it wasn't until all of my identities came crashing down at once that I faced the failure head on. I retook QBA and passed and I re-rushed the business and social fraternities again and got in. And the people I met there are now some of my closest friends. <laughs> It was only after I faced my failures that I realized that you don't actually learn anything from failing, but rather from picking yourself up and putting yourself back out there. The moral of this story is simply that if you can muster up the courage to try again, then it works out. Steve Jobs was once fired by Apple. I'd say that worked out. <coughs> Jack Ma, CEO of Alibaba, was once denied employment at KFC. I'd say that worked out. And J.K. Rowling was once rejected by 12 publishers before someone would take a chance on Harry Potter, and I would say that worked out. Most importantly, when we think of these people, we never think of them as failures, and that's because they never saw themselves as such. Only you can define your identity. So, as Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you, Olin class of 2019, and may success, not failure, follow you wherever you go. <laughs> It 
now gives me great pleasure to represent today's graduating Olin BSBA students to present our 2019 faculty awards. Our class has selected Professor Michael McLaughlin. I, <laughs> I had the pleasure of taking his managerial accounting course last spring and was blown away by the care that he takes for his students. He truly embodies the notion of knowing everybody by name and story. Countless times since completing his class, we've run into each other in Simon Hall, and I've been greeted with the most genuine smile and questions about how I've been up to lately and how I'm doing. Just a few weeks ago, we went and got lunch together, which was great in and of itself, but the truly special part was after I got home when I received an email listing out eight to 10 places that I should visit once I moved to Chicago. Thank you for always going above and beyond for your students. It is now my pleasure to present the 2019 Reed Teaching Award to Professor McLaughlin. Thank you, Matt. Okay. You did a great speech. Thank you. Very fun. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Our class has also selected Professor Bernardo Silveira. And I also had the pleasure of taking his market competition and value appropriation class and was similarly blown away by the care that he takes for his students. There was never a question unanswered, concept unexplained, or hand left raised at the end of class. During one of my most challenging academic semesters at WashU, his class was truly a haven for me. I know I speak not only for myself, but for many of my friends when I say that he really is one of the best professors in the department. It is my pleasure to present the 2019 Reed Teaching Award to Professor Silviera. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matthew, for your remarks and for presenting this year's Reed Teaching Awards. And also, uh, congratulations to Professors McLaughlin and Silvera for uh, demonstrating the very high standards for which Olin is known. So at this time, I would like to invite Senior Associate Dean Steve Malter to the lectern to help me recognize academic achievement in specific fields and comprehensively. If you would like to follow along, please note the complete list of honorees and descriptions of each award detailed in your program. Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Malter and it is my pleasure to be with you and stand before you on this incredible day in which we are celebrating your accomplishments. I'm the Senior Associate Dean of Undergraduate and Graduate Programs and it has been my privilege to get to know you all during your four years, or as Chancellor Wrighton likes to say, your 3.75 years at Washington University at the Olin Business School. We wanted to extend our congratulations to the class of 2019. Without further ado, let's get started with our Student Recognition Awards. We begin with Emma Greenwood, who is a recipient of the John W. Boyer Award in Finance. She is being recognized for having the greatest potential for success in a finance career in the opinion of our faculty. Congratulations, Emma. Next is the Delta Sigma Pi Scholarship Key. This award is presented to the graduating student with the highest academic average for four years of study of business administration. This year's recipient is Jeffrey Bale. Congratulations, Jeffrey. <laughs> Madison Stecker is this year's recipient of the International Business Student Award, awarded to the graduate who shows the greatest potential for a career in international business. Madison is also co-recipient of the Loeb Prize in Leadership Award. The Loeb Prize is awarded to a graduate who has shown leadership in undergraduate activities related to the Olin Business School and who has maintained excellence in scholastic achievement. This award is voted on by her peers. And this year it was decided that Lauren Dumas was equally as deserving of this honor. Congratulations to both Madison and Lauren. As Lauren is coming on stage, we also want to recognize her as the recipient of the Joseph W. Toll Prize, awarded to the graduate with the strongest academic achievement and the most potential in the area of organizational leadership in the opinion of the faculty. Congratulations, Lauren. 
Next, this year's Powell Nealon Prize is presented to the graduate with the strongest academic achievement in the area of operations and manufacturing management. Congratulations to Klebert Etheridge. Well done. <laughs> Brian Lee receives the Arthur M. Seltzer Accounting Award for outstanding work in the area of accounting. Congratulations, Brian. Ryan Beyer is a recipient of the 2019 Undergraduate Marketing Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Marketing. Well done, Ryan. <laughs> the Center for Experiential Learning's Taylor Outstanding Service Award is presented to a graduate who delivered the highest level of impact in the St. Louis local nonprofit community through the CEL program. Awardees distinguish themselves with exceptional leadership that advance the missions and objectives of the organizations and communities in which they engage. This year's award went to Elizabeth Smith, who's already exited. Michael Koshansky receives the Cairo Memorial Award given in recognition of his contributions to Washington University and the St. Louis community through extracurricular or volunteer activities as judged by his classmates. Congratulations, Michael. The Outstanding Student Athlete Award goes to Heidi Nassos. Heidi has distinguished herself as a leader and star athlete during her time at Wash U Olin with three pole vault All-American honors. The seven-time University Athletic Association champion has contributed to six teams that have received trophies at national track and field events, all while standing out amongst the 11 team captains as a leader of the pack. Congratulations, Heidi. Our final award is the Dean's Special Service Award. Lauren Dumas is greatly deserving of this honorable award. Over her years at Olin, Lauren has made contributions to our campus community that will long outlast her stay. As a student, she has demonstrated leadership and her ability to lead by example. Although Lauren struggled a little bit in her first semester, she persevered and has truly stepped into her own as a leader in the classroom. Lauren has served as the head teaching assistant multiple times for Management 100, where she was able to guide first year students in how to persist through these challenges. Her commitment to herself and her academics has provided a role model for many students. As president of Arch Consulting, our traveling case competition student organization, Lauren has led with poise and passion, igniting the organization to complete multiple pro bono consulting projects for the St. Louis community. Her leadership has spanned the country from Boston to Austin to LA as the teams have represented Washi Olin among some of the world's top schools. When Lauren saw membership waning, she stepped up and did what past presidents have been too timid to do, ask members to recommit themselves to the organization or resign. She has brought new life into the organization and it will ensure the success and stability and sustainability. Lauren's growth and leadership have impacted our Olin and Washu communities over the past four years and will continue to do so long after she graduates. Thank you, Lauren, and congratulations. Please join me again in applauding all the achievements of our outstanding award winners. Now I'd like to spotlight several additional honors and distinctions to be recognized today that are outlined in our program. All graduates who have, whose academic excellence has earned them recognition of summa cum laude awarded to the top 5% of the class, please stand. Will all graduates whose academic excellence has earned the recognition of magna cum laude awarded to the top 6 to 15% of the class please stand. <laughs> Next I will ask all graduates whose excellence has earned them the recognition of honors and management awarded to graduating seniors who have completed our honors program to please stand. Now will our Center for Experiential Learning Fellows please stand. These graduates, 
have given their time and energy to help advance our experiential learning programs. Thank you. At this time, I'll ask all graduates who have been inducted into Beta Gamma Sigma, the International Business Honor Society, to please stand. These merits are awarded to our most accomplished students. We are very proud in each and every one of them. Finally, before the presentation of the degree recipients, I would also like to acknowledge another several special groups of students, the first being the recipients of the Olin Business School's Distinguished Scholarships. Will the Olin Dean Scholars please stand to be recognized? Will the Danforth Scholars please stand to be recognized? Will the recipients of the Entrepreneurship Scholarship please stand to be recognized? Will the recipients of our Irvin Scholarship please stand to be recognized? And finally, will those that have received the Rodriguez Scholarship please stand to be recognized? At this time, I'd like to invite Paige LaRose and Yoon Groves to join Dean Taylor and me in presenting the graduating class of 2019. The first member of the BSBA of 2019 class who I invite to cross the stage today is our student marshal with the highest grade point average, Jeffrey Bale. Matthew Savage. Emma Greenwood. Madison Stecker. Lauren Dumas. Kleber Etheridge. Brian Lee. Ryan Byer. Elizabeth Smith. Michael Kashansky. Heidi Nassus. Christopher Detloff. William McKay. Julian Malik. Stephanie Botkin. Caitlin Klausner. Gary Wang. Victor Yao. Unisha Bandarpali. Bowden Chushak. Zimrat Slyer. Marissa Ippolito. T. 
Taylor Bernard. <laughs> Jessica Chan. Jordan Sliger. Romolo Sosa. Lalita Buenaventura. Lolly. <laughs> Joseph Park. Peter Kiesel. Ann Kroll. Lauren Zwick. Sasha Gardner. Abigail Bishop. Will Hewn. Darcy Hayes Cunningham. Benjamin Hudson Marcus. Jacob Kuhn. <laughs> Jeffrey Dedeker. <laughs> Ryan Allen Arthur. You doing part with? Cole Corson. Henry Mahalski. Sean DeCarlis. Catherine Zhu. Lisa Q. Nicholas Damare. Jonathan Lukens. Vijay Chinnam. William Martis. Nathaniel Turk. <laughs> Jessica Turner. <laughs> Sydney Landers. <laughs> Eli Perlmutter. Perry Gordon. Lauren Sapp. Andrew Peck. Aaron Zephyr. Maxwell Bash. Zachary Becker. Justin Friedman. Blake Goldman. Madeline Toe.
Claire Crupella. Erico Golubovsky. <laughs> you jinxed me. <laughs> Ryan Farhat Sabat. <laughs> Betsy Morgan. Alexandra Hirsch. Lauren Hartman. Lauren Gelb. Jerry Glickman. Maxwell Brenner. Zachary Cotton. Charles Manoff. Mark Norwich. John Freilich. Nicholas East. Christian Burmeister. Alexander Dees. Tess Mandeley. <laughs> Natalie Lim. <laughs> Umal Hawk. <laughs> Casey Kim. Annalise Morgan. Wright Lindgren. Radhakrishna Vishnu Bhutla. Matthew Pitara. Daniel Podolsky. <laughs> Benjamin Fiegenbaum. <laughs> Zoyin Jerry Lee. <laughs> Barry Liu. Justin Shin. <laughs> Mumin Siddiqui. <laughs> Miles Novak. <laughs> Jonathan Mishori. William Andreen. <laughs> Calvin Works. <laughs> Sung Hwap Wu. <laughs> Gun Ho Kim. Yu Jin Yoon.
<laughs> Sarah Podolsky. <laughs> Francesca Dehat. Rina Nigaram. <laughs> Yu Heng Zong. <laughs> Madeline Sherman. <laughs> Megan McGrath. Lauren Mantle. <laughs> Hannah Page. <laughs> Noah Stein. <laughs> Leary Wong. Tyler James. Savannah Zhang. Catherine Zera. Florence Mirabito. Alex Fellinger. <laughs> Kemdi Unzarike. <laughs> Andrew Winter. <laughs> Logan Bash. Jake Shepton. <laughs> Magali Valente. <laughs> Nicholas Morira. <laughs> Amy Chang. Jenna Sumikawa. Go ahead. Kennedy Kelly Hooks. Emily Holbert. Emma Luton. Anisha Nala Krishnan. <laughs> Lydia Duran. <laughs> Edward Larkin. <laughs> John Kuzni. Kyle Perez. <laughs> Noah Hexman. <laughs> Brian Andrzejski. <laughs> Megan Shaw. <laughs> Jacqueline Fancher. Esther Dewar. Aaron Schwimmer. Ryan Chow.
Dylan Brambora. Cameron Corona. Matthew Tabakin. Matthew Doherty. Jacob Steinfeld. Jason Blankfein. Adam Kaufman. Anthony Tu. Are you playing games? Samuel Pointer. Christopher Nelson. Natalia Betker. Jamie Shen. Alyssa Haney. Andrew Bauer. Scott Solomon. Jeremy Barnes. Julian Kay. Daniel Rivera. Brian Lee. Jerry Abba. Brent Catlin. David Patikoff. Nicole Barisi. Karima Jaju. Serena Lamb. Carl Compton. Noah Silverman. Charles Kosha. Zachary Beyer. Heishan Lee. Jiwa Chen. Seema Sohi. William Durham. Alexander Stillman. John Mattingly. Alan Beckerman. Tara Robinson. Paul Morris. I 
Aditya Gandhi. Eugene Kim. Sydney Chu. Zachary Alter. Kenneth Breslow. Kendall Sievright. Thomas Elzinga. Mackenzie Hoyt. Jordan Gonan. Anthony Cortese. Brooke Robinson. Noful Zuber. Natasia Mothershed. Dean Taylor, Olin's class of 2019. So um, we are now moving towards the, uh, the end of our recognition ceremony. But I'd just like to take a moment to remind the graduates to pick up your diploma in the Active Learning Lab, Bower Hall 330, uh, during the reception. Uh, please remain seated until the stage participants have left, uh, led the recessional out of the field house. Uh, and I invite you all to join us uh, and Olin's newest graduates in Knight and Bower for a celebratory reception. So let me be the first to say, Congratulations, graduates. On behalf of our faculty and staff, good luck, stay in touch, go out and change the world for good. <laughs>